In the next several lessons, we'll be exploring graphing linear equations. So we did a little bit of graphing earlier with point plotting, which is not the best way to go generally. Um, so we're going to graph a linear equation now in standard form. So in standard form, there's a couple of different forms. Standard form is where you have the x variable and the y variable on the same side of the equation. And then of course a constant, some other value that does not have a variable on the other side of the equation. That is called standard form. Now I know that this is a standard form equation for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's in the correct format. Also, um, the x and the y are to the first power. So I know that when I graph this linear equation, it's going to make a line because x and y are to the first power. Neither x or y are the denominator of the fraction. And then of course, when we graph something in standard form, we're going to end up finding the intercepts. We've already talked about how to find the intercepts, so it should be fairly straightforward for us. So for instance, in this case, we know finding the intercepts means that once we're gonna let x equal zero and once we're gonna let y equal zero, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. In this one, I'm letting x equal zero, so I have negative three y minus two times zero, well, two times zero is zero. So I have negative three y equals negative six and dividing by negative three, I get y equals two. What that means is zero comma two is a point. And then if I let y equals zero, that's negative three times zero, which is zero, gives me negative two x equals negative six. So x is of course three. So that's the point here at three. So whenever I see that an equation is in standard form, I'm going to use the intercept. So again, standard form, I knew because x and y were on the same side, and I had a constant without a variable on the other side. Again, I'm gonna do this one the same way. So if I let x equal zero, that means two y plus zero equals four. Two y plus zero is two y. 2y equals four means y must be two, so zero comma two. And if I let y equal zero, that's two times zero plus x equals four. Two times zero is zero, and zero plus x is x, so x must be four. So that's this linear equation. So notice I'm making a nice straight line, finding the intercepts rather than plugging points in for a table like we did previously. Here is a standard form equation for you to try all by yourself. So press pause, graph the equation, and then press play to check your work. For the first, if I let x equal zero, that's three times zero plus four y equals 12. Three times zero is zero. Dividing by four gives me y equals three, so zero comma three. And then three x plus four times zero equals 12, gives me three x equals 12, gives me that x is four. So that would be over here. And then I would connect the dots. I give you three very similar equations, sorry about that. Now, vertical and horizontal lines are a little bit different. They're not really considered standard form or slope intercept form, but it's good to talk about them. When you have just one variable, so just an X or just a Y, you're either going to have a vertical line or a horizontal line, one or the other. So noticing here, I've got X equals negative four. I'm going to go on my coordinate plane to where X is negative four. I'm going to draw a perpendicular line, a line that is perpendicular to the X axis. So don't go out to negative four and then draw a line like this because that would be silly. Um, so the equation of any vertical line will be that x is by itself with no y value. So a meaning that that's just a is the x-intercept. That's where it crosses the x-axis. Horizontal lines, obviously it makes sense then that that would be a y equals equation instead. So I would go to where y is two and then I would draw a horizontal line through that. So any horizontal line is given by y equals b where b is of course the y-intercept. So these don't have any kind of slope because they're either vertical, which means they have an undefined slope, or they're horizontal, which means they have a slope of zero. We'll talk more about slope in the next lesson. So if I were to graph these lines, um, actually I'll let you go ahead and graph them and then we'll check them together. So press pause, graph all four, and then press play to check your work. 
for the first x equals 2. Again, I'm going to go to where x is 2 and put a point. And then I'm going to draw a line that is perpendicular to the x-axis. So the x-axis is this one, and x equals equation is this way. x equals negative 3 means I'm going to negative 3 and drawing a perpendicular line to the x-axis. y equals 1 means I'm going on the y-axis to where y is 1 and then drawing that horizontal line, which is of course perpendicular to the y-axis. And then y equals negative 2, again, would be that horizontal line perpendicular to the y-axis. Not a bad idea to understand what intercepts are all about. So when you are asked to interpret what they mean, it's important that you actually know what they mean. So in this equation, they actually give me this equation, and they're saying find both of the intercepts. So to find the intercept, I would plug a 0 in for y and solve. and I would plug a 0 in for x and solve. So my x-intercept would be 7.5 comma 0 and my y-intercept would be 0 comma 30, so two different points. Now interpreting the intercepts has to do with all of this other stuff that I didn't even really read when I, when I got here. So let's read it together. So we have that Acme Motor Company tests the engines of its trucks by running the engines in a lab. The engines burn four gallons of fuel per hour. The engines begin a test with 30 gallons of fuel. The equation represents the amount of fuel Y, so Y is fuel, left in the engine after X hours. So that's what's going, these two are gonna help me determine what's going on in these points. So interpreting the X intercept, which is this one, means that when X is 7.5, Y is zero. So after 7.5 hours, I have zero gallons left in the tank. Doing the same for the y-intercept, which is 0, 30, means when x is 0, y is 30. So after zero hours, I have 30 gallons left in the tank. So that would mean when I begin the experiment at zero hours, there are 30 gallons of fuel in the tank. Whenever you are asked to interpret anything, it's really important that you're not just saying, it crosses the y-axis at this point, or it crosses the x-axis at this point. That's more defining what an intercept is. Interpreting means now let's look at the situation and interpret it based on the situation that is happening.